Martin, what is, if you had to get, point to one thing why your company has become so successful, what would be the one key takeaway that you, that you would point to? I, I already mentioned it. I think it's culture, but it uh, also is combined with a mission. So uh, I think quite early on, we understood that we want to make the world better and actually build more people-friendly cities. And this is something that uh, we believe strongly. We live that mission every day. So I bike to office and basically 90% of my rides in Tallinn, I do by biking. And my brother Marcos, who is CEO, he doesn't have a driver's license. So he's only using shared mobility services. So, um, and also working to, to the office if possible. So, so I think uh, starting from that very early on, the culture and living the values that you have, and this actually then brings the people that who believe in the same values, who believe in the same mission, and that is, let's say, motivating so much of them besides only the compensation part. And if, uh, if you attract right people, you can do miracles. And, and in our case, yeah, this is about changing cities, which is not a simple thing. So we can solve and offer solutions on the transportation part, but we need to also convince the cities to think about their planning and, and uh, how transportation networks are built, how even the districts are built and so on. And uh, to convince and change that, it takes time. And, and uh, yeah, I think if you believe that you are on the right mission, then uh, it's so much easier to, to do that. And, and also here, I would say that being in Saudi, it's really enlightening to, to learn about their 2030 mission, how, how they are thinking of new cities, Neom and, and many others. And of course, we see that even in Riyadh, the traffic have slight issues. So uh, we uh, try to help and think and work together with the, with the government and, and the teams and local partners to, to see that how we could really solve it, make the cities and, and the world better. So, so I would say that, yeah, if, if, you, if you build a company, try to think, are you actually providing value and to whom and why? And if you're serious about it, then I think, yeah, that bring similar-minded people to your team. We're all hoping that you're working on that for us for next year, Martin. Please Thank do. you. It's for, it's for the next <laughs> one or two or three decades to, to move on, so we're for the long term. Thank you. And Kush, okay, what can you share around failures that you have? Because so often people see the level of success that you all have on the outside, but don't think that you have to struggle with the type of failures that they have. What, what, what is one that you can share that you've overcome? Mike saw. Hello, yeah. So I think, uh, again, it's a long journey and I think a lot of failures, a lot of them. Uh, the first failure when we got our uh, first funding, we opened a lot of locations and then realized we opened a lot, uh, not the right ones. So we again shrinked our network. Then we again, when we were in cloud, we opened a big network. Then we again shrunk our network. Uh, but I think the biggest uh, but I, I think we don't have any regret because we were doing something different. Uh, so if you ask me, failure in terms of when we were going for multi-brand, so we have a brand called Fasos, which was selling wraps. We started selling biryani in Fasos, pizza in Fasos, salads in Fasos, and people were not buying. And then we realized, okay, people associate one brand with one cuisine. So we started a brand called Olive Trails, which was of continental food, didn't work. Uh, then we started another brand for Chinese, didn't work. So then finally, first brand which worked for us was Behru's. So it, I think it's more about, uh, there will be a lot of failures. Uh, and for all the founders, it's more about keeping at it. And I think all of us talked about culture. Uh, so we as a rebel build a culture of courage. Where our teams, so I am with rebel from 12 years. And we have around 50 more people who are who joined within the next six months. I have. 70% of my workforce, which is more than five years in the company. So we have a team where there's culture of courage. People have no insecurity. They don't scare when they get failed. So they do new things. They go to new markets and open new markets. They try new brands, new food, new products. So I think uh, while there are a lot of failures, if the, this whole culture of courage is what helped us navigate and build, go back to drawing board, work again, and our values, which is always thinking customer first, challenge the status quo and ownership. 
So this is how we, we tackled our failures and navigate it in our journey. We keep hearing, be courageous, embrace failures over and over again. Thank you so much. Dilip, to you, what are the most important skills or qualities an entrepreneur needs to have in this day and age? Um, I, I can talk about myself. Yeah. So um, I, I think the first thing is you can't almost overthink it. And the number one thing I've seen with founders that don't make it is they kind of analyze it to death. And the reality is you're going to have 50% information if you're lucky. If you're waiting for 80 or 90% information, someone's already done it. Uh, and so you have to move pretty quickly, and that window that you're building for also moves. And the biggest thing I've seen is people think it's always there, and they're like, all right, now I'm ready, but that window's already gone. And like someone else has already done that. And you know, when we launched, uh, we started in multiple countries, and we were shipping US cards to multiple countries. Now we have licenses in 22 countries, but if I was waiting for the license to start, we just would never start. Right? And so it's a balance. You have to be comfortable with that level of risk. And then the second thing is, I think someone mentioned this here, but you have to enjoy the process. Like, build something you want to build. Because at the end of the day, you know, the funding, your unicorn, like, none of that's going to get you through when it's hard. And you have to, like, be like, why are you actually doing this? Because you could probably do a lot of other things. And so if you don't enjoy the process of building, you don't fall in love with the process, the outcome, and everyone wants an outcome. We're all here. We want an outcome. But if you don't enjoy the process, it's going to be very, very hard to make it, and you're probably going to burn out. And then the last thing that I've seen, and this is something someone told me, but as a founder, you have the most information. And so a lot of times things don't look as good as people tell you it is on the outside, but they're also not probably as bad as you think it is on the inside. You see everything, right? And part of this is like splitting that up and being like, hey, keeping the balance of your good days are good, your bad days are bad, some days is the same day, but it will change. Tomorrow's a new day, you get another shot. So you have to like enjoy that process to get to that end point. I love that. For me, with speaking, again, not a unicorn, not a billionaire yet. Uh, for me, when it comes to speaking, the way you get over that fear is thinking about the one person you can impact, going back to the one small difference that you can make. And if you keep going back to that, it can propel you yep. to, that, to that next one. It's helpful.